Welcome back. We have been working on the water cycle and I found another book. It's called Down Comes the Rain. This is by Franklin M. Branley and it's illustrated by James Graham Hale. See if you really can tell the water cycle, okay? Do you remember the important words that we talked about? We talked about yesterday in your picture, evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. Am I writing off now? And I do not have a yellow marker. If I had a yellow marker, I would put the sun up here, right? The sun beats down on the water. The sun beats down on the water and the water turns into water vapor. As it goes up into the air, we call that evaporation. As it goes up into the air, condensation happens when the water droplets hit the cool air and they condense, they come together and they form water droplets again. And then as the clouds get full, more and more full of water droplets, then it falls to the ground and we have precipitation. So we have evaporation, condensation, precipitation. Down comes the rain. Rain comes from clouds. It comes from big clouds and little clouds. It comes from black clouds, white clouds, and gray clouds. All clouds, big ones and little ones, gray ones and white ones, are made of billions of tiny drops of water. The drops are called droplets because they are so small. If this is the size of a drop of water, a droplet would be just a tiny speck, even smaller than this one. Can you see that there? Water droplets come from water vapor. Water vapor is a gas. There's always water vapor in the air, but you can't see it, can't smell it, and you can't feel it. Water vapor is made when water evaporates. That means the water changes from a liquid to a gas. In the morning, put a teaspoon of water in a saucer. That's a plate. By that night, it may have evaporated into the air. When wet clothes hang on the clothesline, the water in them evaporate. The heat from the sun changes the water drops and droplets into water vapor. Just like the heat from the stove changes water in the kettle to water vapor. If you heat it long enough, all the water boils away. The water vapor goes into the air. Most of the water vapor in the air comes from lakes, rivers, and oceans. It comes from the leaves of plants and from the wet ground. Heat from the sun causes the water to evaporate. The water changes from a liquid to a gas and the water vapor goes into the air. Right? Just like we were talking about here, evaporation. When you breathe out, you put water vapor into the air. Usually, you cannot see the water vapor, but it is there. Sometimes if it's cold, you can see your breath. That's because the water vapor condenses it changes from a gas to a little cloud. Hey, your breath is a cloud. 
When cows, horses, dogs, and cats breathe out, they put water vapor into the air too. On a cold day, the water vapor changes to droplets and makes little clouds that you can see. This is for there, I can't get the pages away. You can make water vapor change to water. Put a lot of ice into a glass of water. As the glass gets colder, the outside of the glass gets wet. Remember that used to happen at the beginning of the year? Water vapor in the air is condensing on the glass. There may be so much condensation that the glass drips. Sometimes the glass stays dry. That means there is not much water vapor in the air. Remember at the beginning of the year when it was hot and we had water bottles and we would have little puddles on the floor? The air holds the water vapor. Breezes carry it from one place to another. Much of the vapor moves up and away from the earth. Air above the earth is always cold. The higher you go, the colder it gets. When air gets cold enough, the water vapor in it condenses. The vapor changes to water droplets. The water droplets make clouds. When clouds are thin and wispy, they are holding only a little water. But when clouds are thick and dark, they are holding much more water. A single droplet is so small you cannot see it, but you can see a cloud. That's because there are millions and millions and millions of water droplets in a cloud. Inside the clouds, droplets join together to make drops. When clouds can no longer hold them, the drops fall to the earth. The sky is full of them. They fall through the air and splatter on the ground. They are raindrops. Sometimes there are only a few small raindrops that fall slowly. It is drizzling. Sometimes there are lots of big drops that fall very fast. Now it is pouring. Sometimes the drops in clouds freeze. These raindrops become ice drops. This can happen even on a hot summer day. Some clouds may be higher than most airplanes ever go. The higher the clouds, the colder they are. That's because the clouds and water droplets are high above the earth. Many clouds are so high that it is freezing cold. In these high cold clouds, water vapor changes to droplets and the droplets change to drops. The drops freeze into ice. Inside the cloud, these tiny bits of ice start to fall but they don't always fall out of the cloud. Instead, they may be carried upward by air that is moving away from the earth. So you can see freezing cold, water vapor, droplet, water drop, ice drop. As they are carried upward, more water collects on the tiny bits of ice. When that water freezes, the drops of ice have another layer on them. On them, the ice drops are now heavier, so once more they fall toward the earth. But air moving away from the earth may carry the ice drops upward again. Higher and higher they go, and another layer of ice freezes onto them. So they go up high, and they get so heavy, and they start to fall. But then they go back up, and they get another layer of ice, and they come back down, and then they get another layer of ice. The ice drops get heavier and heavier. They get so heavy that the air can no longer carry them upward. So the ice drops fall to the earth. It is raining ice. The ice drops are called hailstones. They may, may be the size of your fingernail, or they may be as big as golf balls or even bigger. 
In 1970, hailstones as big as softballs fell on Kansas. Fields of corn were flattened by the hailstones. Hailstones are not stones, they're pieces of ice. So when it hails, go inside so you're not hit on the head. When it stops hailing, go outside and pick up a hailstone. Break it in two and you will see the layers of ice. So each of these layers means it started to come down, it went back up, it came back down, it went back up. Water in the clouds makes hail. Water in the clouds makes rain. When it stops raining or hailing, the sun comes out. Once more, water evaporates. It evaporates from lakes, rivers, and oceans. It evaporates from the leaves of plants and from the wet ground. It evaporates from cows and horses, from cats and dogs, and, and from you and me. The water changes to water vapor. It's carried up and away from the earth where the air is cool or even freezing. When the water vapor cools, it condenses. The water vapor changes to water droplets and all together the droplets make clouds. Water droplets join together to make water drops. The drops fall to the earth from the clouds. Once more, it is raining. So you can see this wa the water cycle just keeps happening over and over and over and over again. Tomorrow, I'm going to have something really fun for you to do with the water cycle. Okay, I'll see you later.